Hi, this is Bart Polson, and this video is for Psychology 1100 Lifespan Development. This is for the first online quiz for Chapter 2, which is called Beginnings. The first question in this one is, according to Figure 2.1 in the text, good thing it's an open book uh, quiz, according to Figure 2.1 in the text, which of the following is the smallest unit? So of the choices, which one's the smallest? The cell, the chromosome, the nucleus, or... DNA. Well, the answer to this one is D, DNA, because DNA makes up the chromosomes, and the chromosomes go into the nucleus, and actually they go into the entire cell, but the nucleus is just one part of the cell. So DNA is the smallest of those four choices. Second question, which of the following would be an example of a dominant trait? So dominant and recessive. Uh, blonde hair, blue eyes, red hair, or brown eyes? Well, it turns out that those first three, blonde hair, blue eyes, and red hair, are all recessive, and so the answer is D. Of those four, brown eyes is the only one that's a good example of a dominant trait. The third question. Paul and Peter seem identical in almost every way. They have the same taste in music, they have the same facial expressions and features, they drive the same car, and they work in the same professional field since they did not grow up together. So what explanation is there for this? Well, the choices we're given are A, there's an environmental basis for their behaviors, B, they are dizygotic twins, C, they have strong instinctive connection, or D, there's a genetic basis for their behaviors. Well, um, the answer that the book says is correct is D, there is a strong genetic basis for their behaviors. Now, um, the idea here that there wouldn't be an environmental basis because they did not grow up together. On the other hand, you can still grow up in a very similar environment even if you're not in the same house. Dizygotic twins, those are people who are born at the same time but are no more genetically related than other siblings. And strong instinctive connection, that is uh, mumbo jumbo. Now, you know, truthfully, I, I will say, while D is the answer that gets you points on this quiz, I would like to suggest uh, E, it's a fluke, um, just a random correlation, but that's not gonna get me too far on this particular one. That's not a choice here, so we're gonna go for a strong genetic basis. Okay. Who of the following would be more likely to share autism? A, male siblings, B, female siblings, D, DZ twins, you, and you have to know that that means dizygotic twins, and D, MZ, or monozygotic twins. Well, of these four choices, uh, the one that shows people who are most likely to share autism is D, that's monozygotic twins. And that makes sense because monozygotic twins share all of their genetics, they're genetically identical. And so if they have autism, it makes sense that if there is any genetic component to autism, and there's good reason to believe there is, then they would both share that same thing. So that's the uh, most obvious choice here. Again, the trick here is you have to know that DZ and MZ mean dizygotic or two zygotes or you know two fertilized eggs, and MZ means monozygotic means a single fertilized egg that's split into two embryos. All right, number five. Which of the following helps couples select the gender of the child? So if you're gonna have a baby and you wanna pick whether it's a boy or girl, which of the following is gonna be the most helpful? A, in vitro fertilization, B, donor IVF, that's short for in vitro fertilization, C, motility, and that's referring to sperm motility, put them in addition and see how fast they swim around, and D, pre-implantation genetic diagnosis. Well, guess what? Um, it turns out that very often when you're taking a multiple choice test, there is an increased tendency for the long answer to be correct, which is in fact the case here. D, pre-implantation genetic diagnosis. And what this means is that you do, an, you do uh, the, 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 you know, sort of, it's an in vitro because in vitro means in glass, and that means test tube baby. And what that means is that the egg is pulled out of the mother's womb and sperm, you get sperm from the, the father and you put them together in a, in a glass dish and then you fertilize eggs. Now, normally you actually get many eggs from the mother at the same time. Um, I mean, you can get you can get over a dozen in one month, and um, 
And what you uh, can do then is it is possible to do a genetic test on the embryos as they grow and, and figure out which ones are male and female and then implant the ones that you want, you know. And so it's possible. It's just enormously expensive and time consuming and difficult. So anyhow, number six, which of the following develops into the reproductive system? So we're talking about a, an embryo. A, the ectoderm. B, the endoderm. C, the neural tube, or D, the mesoderm. Okay, well, obviously you have to even know what these terms mean. Derm is skin, like, you know, uh, uh, dermatology. Uh, ecto, sort of be the inner, endo, outer, meso is the middle. The neural tube develops into the brain, the spinal cord um, and the brain. The answer here is D, mesoderm. The mesoderm means the middle skin or the middle layer, and that's the part um, that's going to develop into the reproductive system and some other organs. Um, okay, the next question, number seven. At what point in development will an embryo begin to look like an infant? I mean, is it identifiably, you know, human as opposed to, you know, a, a sea slug or a seahorse or whatever? Um, the choices are A, one month. B, two months, C, three months, or D, four months? Well, um, embryos are really small uh, in the beginning. Um, on the other hand, it doesn't take very long for them to start looking human, identifiably human. And the answer here is B, in two months you can get that um, step. Question number eight. Keisha is in the 32nd week of her pregnancy, and there are indications that she might deliver early. You need to know that pregnancy is usually 40 weeks, so this is two months early. Keisha is worried that the baby will have potentially fatal distress if she's born prematurely. What would you tell her, assuming you're in a position to give this kind of advice? That the chances of survival are nearly 60%, that's pretty darn low. They're nearly 70%, they're nearly 80%, or they're nearly 90%. Now, keep in mind, chances of survival are never 100% for anybody. So, you know, higher is better. Well, uh, if you can get to the 32nd week, so you're still eight, eight weeks early, but the chances of survival now are nearly 90%. So, you know, that's encouraging. It'd be nice if they were higher, but 90% is better than any of the other choices here. Which gets us to the next question, which is related. At what point is a baby no longer considered preterm? So they're no longer a preemie. Uh, at 36 weeks, at 37, at 38, or at 39 weeks. Again, 40 weeks is uh, the, the normal. Um, the answer here is 38 weeks, C. So just two weeks early is not considered preterm. More than that, potentially. But two weeks, not a big deal. And that's good to know because there is a fair amount of variation when babies come. Last question in this first quiz is, which of the following can be determined from the ultrasound? The choices are FAS. You have to know that that stands for fetal alcohol syndrome. B, height. C, Huntington's disease. And D, paternity. So being able to determine who, you know, the father of. And uh, it turns out it's the, the easiest one is the most obvious. I feel kind of silly for saying this, but, you know, height is what you can determine from an ultrasound because you can actually measure. Fetal alcohol syndrome is pretty tricky. You can tell it sometimes when the baby's born. Huntington's disease is a whole other issue. Paternity, you're going to need a genetic test. Uh, but if you're just looking and an ultrasound is just looking, height is the one that you can get most easily. Anyhow, that's the end of the review for quiz 02. That's chapter 2, quiz number 1 on beginnings for lifespan development. Thanks.